Let's now talk about normal and shear stresses. Our course outcome is to develop an understanding of normal and shear stress and strain. That's something we're going to be working on throughout this unit, and really we'll be covering this topic throughout the entire course. Now, specific lessons. Understand the concept of normal stress and solve for average normal stress in an actually loaded bar. And understand the concept of shear stress and solve for average shear stress in simple direct shear situations. In the last video we talked about internal resultant loads. Okay, uh, here's Let's look at an example. Here is a simple structure. It's a hanger. The red rod shown connected to a larger structural beam and supporting a load. Now what I want to do is look at the internal resultant loads. So I'm going to start with a free body diagram of the entire rod. Okay? There's a load at the lower end and there's a support at the top. And We can represent that support, which is just a nut, uh, with two forces. A force, a resultant force in the x direction, or a resultant force in the y direction. Summing forces in the x direction, we know that the resultant force or the reaction force is equal to zero. Summing forces in the y direction, we know the resultant force vertically is equal to P. Okay. Now let's pick an arbitrary point, call it B. And we want to find the internal resultant loads at B. So we're going to cut it there and draw a free body diagram of the cut member. Here it is. At the cut surface, we're going to apply are three internal resultant loads. A normal force, an internal shear, and an internal moment. Summing forces in the x direction, we know the shear is zero, the moment is zero, and summing forces in the y direction, uh, we know that the normal force is equal to p. Let's look a little bit closer at what's going on there, right at point b. Okay, We've zoomed in. Here I've shown the internal resultant load is a normal force. And we show that normal force acting right through the centroid of this cross-section and is acting perpendicular to the cross-section. Now we know that that force really isn't just traveling through the center of this member right through the centroid, but really the whole member, all this material is participating in transferring these internal loads. This cross-section has a surface area that we're going to call A. And to represent what's really happening, we're going to take that normal force and spread it over the entire cross-section. If we do that, we could represent it with this picture here on the right. And what we're going to call this uh, distribution of force over the whole area is a, a normal stress. And we give it the symbol, the Greek letter sigma, a lowercase sigma. And sigma will be used to represent normal stress throughout this entire course. And the stress is normal because it's perpendicular to the surface. And it's in the direction of the internal resultant normal force. Now, we can write an equation for sigma in an actually loaded member such as this is simply the internal resultant force divided by the cross-sectional area. Now let's talk about the units for normal stress. N is a force. A is an area. In US customary units, uh, the force is usually going to be in units of pounds. And the area is typically in inches squared. Sometimes this is this is a little bit of a small unit for the normal stresses that we're typically looking at in engineering. So sometimes we'll use kips per inch squared, where a kip is a thousand pounds. Now, in international system, the units for force are typically in newtons, and area is typically in meters squared. Now a newton per meter squared is also uh, called a Pascal. Okay? And a Pascal is really a, a very small stress and uh, in engineering we our stresses are uh, usually large enough that it's more convenient to write our units in mega Pascals. 
where 1 megapascal is equal to 1 million 